Hey there, it's Steve from Serious Keto, and I am back with a review of another baking mix from Sonora Keto Pantry, the Tortilla Mix. Anybody that's been a viewer of this channel for any length of time knows about my passion for tortillas. I've made, I think, six different tortilla recipe videos, and I've reviewed close to 30 different tortillas that are either labeled keto or keto-friendly or low-carb. I've also been pleased with the quality of the baking mixes from Sonora Keto Pantry, so I'm pretty excited about these tortillas. Before we get going though, let's take a look at the nutritional information and ingredients. Serving size is one tortilla. There are 12 that you get out of making the mix. 120 calories, 10 grams of total fat, four grams of total carbohydrates, of which three are dietary fiber for a net one, and five grams of protein. In terms of ingredients, we have almond flour, spray-dried pasteurized whole egg, xanthan gum, corn flour, psyllium husk powder, salt, and baking powder. With the corn flour and then the corn starch that's included in the baking powder, it'll be interesting to see if this has any impact on my blood glucose, and we'll get to that soon enough. But first, let's see how easy or difficult it is to make this mix. Besides the mix, this requires one cup of water and one tablespoon of lard. This is some stuff I rendered myself. The water needs to be warm and the lard needs to be melted, so I'm going to take care of both of those at the same time with 30 seconds in the microwave. I'll empty the bag of mix into a large mixing bowl, and then using a spatula I'll make sure I pat out any big chunks and make a well for my liquid, which you can see is now warm enough to melt the lard. Pour that in, and then I'm going to mix it together with a spatula. In total, this took about two minutes of just scraping around the edges, scraping underneath, folding it all together, and making sure that all of the dry ingredients are fully incorporated and absorbed. Then I'm going to scoop this out onto a piece of plastic wrap and form a log. I'm going to grab the ends, give it a little twist to compact it, smooth it out a bit just to make sure it's as uniform as possible. And then this will go into the fridge for 30 minutes to hydrate. After 30 minutes, I'm going to cut this up into 12 as equal as possible portions as I can. And then roll each of them into a rough ball and set it back on my piece of plastic wrap. Now I'm using a tortilla press with some parchment rounds here. You can use a plastic bag, like a Ziploc bag, cut in half. And I did press this a little bit thin on one edge. Now typically what I'll do then is I'll transfer them to my hand before going on to a cast iron skillet preheated to medium-low, or kind of the low end of medium. But this is not peeling off real well from the parchment and it's also sticking to my hand here. While that cooks, I'm going to start prepping my next tortilla, but with a modification. I've got a little bowl of almond flour here that I'm going to roll each of my balls of dough in. This is not on the instructions in the package, but it is in their video on their website. I'm going to get this centered. Make sure I'm not too close to the edge so I don't flatten it out too thin like I did the last one. And we'll see how this peels. Much better, much better. I will remove the tortilla from the first skillet and go on to a second skillet. This way I sort of have a nice assembly line going. And this time I'm going to keep the paper on when I transfer the tortilla to the first skillet. You obviously couldn't do this if you were using plastic, but that peeled way, way better. And now I just sort of repeat the assembly line. While those tortillas are cooking, I press a new one, then I take the one off the second skillet and put it onto a cooling rack. Flip over the one from the first skillet, looking good, so that's going to go onto the second skillet. And then transfer my just made tortilla onto the first skillet. I'll repeat this nine times. Alright, now I'm going to try out one of these tortillas. This is the first one, the defective one, but I'm not surprised that the first one was defective. Even on all of my own recipes, that first one is usually scrap. But we're going to try it out. It is very pliable, very nice. Um, I'll try it a little bit later with some ground beef to see how well it holds up to ingredients. Hmm, it's, uh, it's pretty good. 
The texture really reminds me of lefse, and I haven't had lefse in a number of years. I grew up in South Dakota, big Norwegian community, had lefse there a lot, and that's made from potato. This obviously doesn't taste like potato, but it does have that sort of lefse texture, which I'm kind of fond of. I would say taste-wise, it's pleasant, pretty close to neutral. I'm not picking up really any of the corn from the corn flour in it, but this is this is probably the best keto mixed tortilla I've ever had. But like I said, I want to make sure that I give these a complete test, which means also trying them out with some ingredients, maybe seeing how they fry up, and of course I got to do a blood glucose test. It's been a little bit over two hours, so let's see how that tortilla affected my blood glucose utilizing a Dexcom G6 continuous glucose monitor and the Levels Health Analysis software. Not bad, a stable response, 8 out of 10, 10 being the best possible score. Let's take a look at the details. A 13 point change in glucose, so that's really almost within the margin of error. I mean. There are a lot of subtle things that can impact your glucose, just moving around, bumping your elbow on something. To me, anything less than probably 15 or 20 points of movement is really essentially nothing. It's, it's stable, and that's what this was. But most of us probably aren't just going to be eating plain tortillas. So now I want to see how well this holds up to some ground beef and some cheese, maybe put a little sour cream and hot sauce on it. All right, I've got my tortilla with some taco meat, some serrano pepper in there, a little yellow pepper, some onion. I think there might be some cilantro in there. Just sprinkle on a little cheese, a little dollop of sour cream, and a little Fresno chili sauce. So this is kind of both a taste test and a sturdiness test for these shells. I'm going to kind of just try and manhandle it a little bit here to see if I can get it to rip. That holds together really well. Yeah, I don't think I could ask for much more in terms of both pliability and sturdiness. This is a pretty impressive tortilla. I'm back and I'm ready to take a look at my blood glucose results from the last two hours based on that taco that I had. Nice. A 10 out of 10. That's the best score that Levels gives. Let's go into details. Four points. Four milligrams per deciliter of glucose movement. That is nothing. That is perfectly stable and that makes me very, very happy. In the next segment of this video, we're going to see how these tortillas fry up, both as a hard shell taco and as tortilla chips. To make the hard shell, I'm going to start by spraying the tortilla with some avocado oil. This stuff kind of comes out in a stream rather than a spray, so I'm going to need to manually apply it to both sides. And then I've got these overpriced hard shell taco makers here that I'm going to put this into and pop this into my air fryer, set to 395 degrees Fahrenheit. After about five minutes, the color on this is looking pretty good. Nice and firm. Time to make a taco. So I'll add some more of my taco meat, a little sprinkle of cheese. I'm not getting too fancy with this taco. A little hot sauce. I just want to see how it holds together and tastes. All right, let's see how this works. All right, I'm not really big on either the taste or the texture on this. It reminds me a lot of a cracker. In fact, pretty similar to the almond flour cracker recipe that I have, which is good, but not what I'm looking for in a taco shell. So I'm going to say as a hard shell or as a chip, I probably wouldn't use these. So while I wasn't thrilled with the way the hard shell turned out, and I'm sure I'd feel the same way about chips, I really, really do like these as tortillas. Overall, the taste, the texture, big thumbs up. Now, the one concern that I do have, and I suspect it's going to be a sticking point for some of you, is the price, because this mix is $15. 
Now, my position on keto baking products is as follows. I feel that they're really kind of designed for a niche market, namely people who would like to bake, but don't necessarily want to invest in filling up their pantry with a bunch of keto ingredients. So when you buy these prepackaged mixes, you're really paying not just for the mix, you're paying for convenience, you're paying for pantry space, and you're paying for ease of making. Now I will include, down below in the description, a coupon code along with a link that will take a little bit of a bite out of the price. I'm probably going to wind up getting at least another package of this because I want to experiment with the flavor a little bit more. Maybe see what happens if I add some sort of a like one-on-one -on -one flavors tortilla flavor or perhaps a subtle pyrazine, which is basically the taste of Frito corn chips, and see if I can get a true corn tortilla taste out of it. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video and that it'll help you make a better purchasing decision. If it did, please click that like button. If you're not a subscriber already, tap that subscribe button, then hit the bell to turn on all notifications. That's going to be it for this video, though. Thanks for watching.